How on the children to do? This year the Queen Quet. One more again for this year Gullah Geechee TV Nation News. Look y'all on the children. We did down y'all in Grand Bahama Island in Freeport. This year time we did in the Garden of the Groves. So on the children, go and get a lead here so what did y'all just like when we got home. Plenty of these same things we'd have passed by as we'd have gone through these road and things. I don't know see and your grandmama them yard and things like that. But we got like plenty about what the children do there in the Bahamas with these your things. So we so glad that this year we last day of this year Gullah Geechee Seminar Maroon Reunion right here in Grand Bahama. And Hunter children, this year the work going on. Ladies and gentlemen, with that said, many of you are familiar with the fact that the Bahamas used to be a British colony. Mm -hmm. Well, with that said, we remained a British colony from 1717 to 1973, as I said on the bus. Mm -hmm. Well, just before that, for your information, my friend over here, you are from Denmark, is Yes. Mm -hmm. And he is familiar with the fact that the Bahamas, we used to be a proprietorship. Mm -hmm. and Six of the same malt proprietors that would own the Carolinas mm -hmm. would also own a proprietorship known as the Bahamas. The Bahamas. Mm. Well, that said, ladies and gentlemen, these proprietors, these lord proprietors, lost control of these islands. Mm -hmm. And the British king at the time would determine that he could not afford to fight wars both in Europe and here <coughs> in the Americas. And so he would dispatch royal governors to take charge of the situation. Mm -hmm. For you see, where Charlestown, the city of Nassau, is today, that town, Charlestown, would be burned to the ground by Spanish and French troops that would be dispatched from Havana, Cuba. Mm -hmm. There were two royal governors of mention uh, that needs to be mentioned. One is Robert Maynard. He would bring Black Bear, or Edward Teach, to justice in the Carolinas, and Woods Rogers, the first royal governor of the Bahamas. And the royal governor here in the Bahamas had a mandate from the British king, that mandate to expel the pirates and restore trade and commerce. Well, that would be the motto of the Bahamas from 1717 to 1973. Expulsus paratus restituti a commercia. In 1973, on July 10th, 1973 to be exact, our motto would change to forward, upward, onward, together. Mm -hmm. Well, and this plant is called wild sage, as I said, or lantana. And I wanted to just share with you that as a child, the wild sage and the white sage here in the Bahamas would be used by my grandmother. Why? Because when I would take ill, as my friends from Carolina would know, mm -hmm. many times my grandmother went out in the backyard mm -hmm. and she would get some, what we call in the Bahamas bush, That's right. and boil it into a tea. Right. Now in this particular case, the wild sage and white sage here in the Bahamas would be boiled into a tea. Now, rather than drink the tea, you would bathe. B-A-D-E. B -A -D -E. Wow. And yes, that's in English. Like <laughs> right, bed and it gone. And you would take a bath for a period of three to five days, twice a day. The reason why, I had a disease. It was known as measles. And if you know anything about measles and chicken pox, they make you itch. To fight that itch in a way, those baths. And so, as an adult, I don't have marks all over my body. Right. Like many of my friends do, even to this day. Why? Because the wild sage helped to fight away the itching sensation. No itching, no need to scratch. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to just let you know that this bush medicine, as I said on board the bush, the bus, is a big part of our Bahamian culture. I'm going to share that culture with you. Take a bath in the water, the sage of our nation. Yes, it is. Not saying so. What about bait? What you just make a bath? No, you just put it in of course, many of you would recognize this if you're from South Florida. We call this the sea grape. Yeah. And there are over 150 different species of this plant throughout the Americas. I wanted to just let you know a little bit about the sea grape. The sea grape is a true grape. It has a vine. It has multiple grapes on that vine. It, it only has one seed. Just like many grapes, the fruit can be uh, eaten. It's edible. 
and also it can be fermented so it can be made into a wine. Mm -hmm. Now ladies and gentlemen, I also wanted to share with you the bush medicine application for the sea grape. The leaf of the plant, the bark of the plant, and the roots of the plant can be boiled into a tea. That tea is used in the treatment of things like asthma and hay fever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in addition to that, you see, the sea grape is also an astringent, a constrictor. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this plant, believe it or not, is used to make a drug. The drug is known as keno. Well, keno is used for hemorrhaging or internal bleeding, and it helps to stop that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I wanted to just let you know that the sea grape from the West Indies, in particular from Jamaica, would be used in the uh, 20th century. It would be found to be such a great medicinal plant that the, this sea grape, or Cocoloba uvifera, which is mostly from the West Indies, is now found in the South Pacific. Why? Because it was taken from this area of the world and transplanted there. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you will find the Cocoloba uvifera of the West Indies, not just in the West Indies anymore, but throughout the islands of the Pacific. Well, let us continue on to the chapter on the Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to just share with you that Christopher Columbus on October 12, 1492, would have had a miracle that would happen in his life. For you see, his crews had grown weary of their leader, their commander and chief. They had given him an ultimatum. Make land or we will throw you overboard. Well, on October 12, 1492, this miracle occurs. He makes land fall in the Bahamas. And he meets up with a tribe of people. These people are called the Lukukairi, later to be called by the British the Lukaians. And these people have a religious belief. That religious belief teaches them that one day their gods, their deities, would return to the islands of the Bahamas and take them away from here aboard large ships to heaven or paradise. Well, guess what? The Spanish now pretend to be these gods and deities. Such gave the Spanish soldiers mandate. Those soldiers interpreted this mandate, which went something like this, convert those heathen land. They interpreted this to me, and you either accept my God, or you would be executed. Now many of the Lukukairi, they readily converted you. But with that said, there was a core group. You know in every society there's always a few doubters. You know, and these doubters were able to alienate that vast majority. And once that alienation took hold, a depression fell amongst them as Christopher Columbus would write, and many of the Lukukairi of the Bahamas would commit suicide. Well, as for the core group, the people that would remain true to their gods and deities, these are the people that the Spanish soldier would execute. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, I wanted to also share with you that my duties this afternoon would be remiss if I left out the fourth tribe of the West Indies, a people that would range from Jamaica down to Trinidad, Tobago, and Barbados, and they are known as the Arawaks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as for Christopher Columbus, he goes to his grave believing that that first large island, the one we call Cuba today, was either India or China. It would not be until 1499, you see, that another Italian would stand on the shores of Brazil, look up one night at the constellations, and say, you know what, Denmark, we're not east of Europe, but you know where we are? We're west. And perhaps that's the reason why we call this today. The West Indies.